Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. All right, let us pray. Father, today we ask that you come into our midst. Come because we are needy. Come because we are desperate. We ask that you show us mercy. Stretch forth your hand to do your will amongst us and take all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Uh, the people working on the sound, is it possible for you to make the sound better? All right, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. I'd like to teach the scriptures for 40 minutes then we will have a session of prayer are you there in matthew 4 then was jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward and hungered and, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God I believe that will be enough reading for tonight hallelujah the first question we need to ask is why was it necessary for Jesus to be tempted that's the first question second question is what exactly constitutes a temptation what exactly constitutes a temptation now i'd like to begin by explaining a few things and i trust that god will help us ultimately in the name of jesus christ it's it's necessary for us to understand what happened to us when we became captured trapped in the fall of man are you there for instance if you are tired and you feel like taking a nap there is a way your body speaks to you and you understand that your body is saying I need rest if you are thirsty and you need a drink there is a way your body speaks to you and gives you an idea of the fact that the only thing that can quench this feeling this communication that the body is making available to you is a drink are you there now so if we want to analyze our humanity we can sum the description of human life into desires into instincts what makes you human is that you have human desires you have human instincts so hunger is an expression of a desire thirst 
is an expression of a desire tiredness and there are lots and loads of desires that constitute the description of human life unfortunately for us what happened to us on the account of the fall of man is that our desires our instincts as humans um, sustain a possibility of becoming a lost are you there now temptation is at the level of lust all temptation is occasioned by the flesh and I'm going to attempt to bring some very simple illustrations and definitions to aid our understanding of this matter now I may want to introduce another scripture just to consolidate the introduction and then we'll go into the subject matter if you are still with me say amen, amen. James chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 James chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 but every man okay can we go to verse Okay, uh, I think I'm still on. Okay. Now, the person in charge of the screen, can you give us verse 13? James chapter 1, verse 13. He said, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Are you there? Then in verse 14, he gives us an understanding of what a temptation is. First of all, according to verse 14, temptation is idiosyncratic. Temptation is particular to you. So what constitutes a temptation to you may not be a temptation to me. But any time a temptation is found, there are some factors that must be present. He said, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now, so these are the features of a temptation. First of all, there must be a personal lust. And you know I told you that something qualifies to be called a lust it is legitimate when it's still a desire but it goes into the territory it enters into the boundary that attracts the interests of Satan the moment it becomes a loss a loss is a desire that has gone beyond its boundary stay with me I, I want to teach this weekend okay a lust is a desire that has gone beyond its boundary a lust is a desire that has become illegitimate to seek because it is not within the confines of the principles of righteousness and the laws of god so a lust is a desire that is sustained outside of the description of God's law so you will need to break God's law in order for you to satisfy the desire that is sustained in the lost so number one we have in a temptation the ingredients that make up a temptation number one there is a lost number two we need to understand that this lost is not a national lost is not a community lost this lust is a personal loss so temptation is within the context of personal life not communal life or community experience thirdly 
Thirdly, when Satan steps into the terrain, he uses this loss as a means of control. So, Satan uses it as a means of drawing you away. So, when we check, you know, my teacher, my mentor, this is, he told me, if you want to test something, and you want to test whether it is of God or it's of the devil, this is the liquid test. If it draws people away from God, it is of the devil. If it draws people to God, it is of God. So what temptation does is that first of all, there is a lust. And the lust becomes a handle through which the devil draws us away. So there's a drawing away. The potential of being drawn away from the boundaries of the laws of God. There is a potential of being drawn away from the boundaries of the grace of God to compromise the objective of God's grace. That possibility exists with a lost. Now, the lost is yours. But all Satan does for it to become a temptation is that he entices you along the lines of the lust you incubated, the lust you conceived, the lust you protected, the lust you sustained. All Satan did to make it an object that can draw you away is that he came and he enticed you. Now enticement is one of the activities of demons. You are not with me. The other day when I was teaching about demons, I revealed seven things that demons do. And demons are highly intelligent beings that lack bodies. They are persons without bodies. So a demon can seven actually things that and demons engage. do. And demons are highly intelligent a discussion beings that within lack the crucible bodies, of your thought, persons without bodies. It can be the one communicating so a demon your can actually you. engage. And you will think you are the one thinking. A discussion with you. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go within there. the crucible of your talk. So, one of the things that demons do is that they entice. But you see, a demon's enticement will be an act of futility if there is no lust in your heart as a foundation for that effort. It is the enticement that now leads to a drawing away. So temptation becomes a very powerful strategy in the hands of the devil in manipulating the focus of believers and giving them another reason to adventure outside of the scope of their calling. I want you to know how powerful a temptation is. A temptation does not deprive you of your doctorate degree your brain is still at work you are still alive you are alert it's not as if you are under anesthesia no you are good you are still sharp but yet the moment that lust comes it engages your emotion and when your emotion is engaged you are no longer capable of straight balanced thinking I don't know if you have powered overly, powered overly by the emotion. When the emotion comes, it destabilizes the soul and it deprives you of subjecting issues through the normal thought protocol that would have become a defense for you. So the plane in which temptation takes place avoids the scrutiny and the analysis of your mind to the end that it provokes your will to make a choice that you did not process. Oh, you're not here. Now, I'm just trying to build just a simple foundation before we begin this matter. Because by the time we go to Jesus, you will discover Jesus he was 100% God, 
hundred percent man, so he had human desires. Oh my, you are not here. I, I'm trying real hard, <laughs> and I ask God to supply the grace. <laughs> Stay with me. Satan does not put you to sleep in order for him to tempt you. He doesn't knock you out. There are surgeries that are done and you need to be knocked out. You just wake up to see that they've taken out what they wanted to take out and what is left is what you can see. That's not how temptation is. You are alert, you are awake, you are aware, but yet your defense protocols are, are bypassed. You become a victim of something that you are wiser than. You have enough education, you have enough experience to know that this is not the way to go. But there's a spirit element in it. That's why all of the defenses that you have within uh, the scope of your experience and, and the use of your mind, they fall like a pack of cards. The reason why temptation normally wins is because the lost doesn't belong to the devil the lost is yours <laughs> uh, should I proceed <laughs> now I will need to unveil a few things that temptation is not possible outside of the use of your spiritual senses. Satan will use your spiritual senses to enhance his temptation program. Are you with me? You're not with me? All right, you, according to scriptures, okay, within the limits of my understanding of scriptures, because what I know may not be all that there is, okay? So, within the limits of my understanding of scriptures, I am, I know that we have four spiritual senses. All right? Okay, let me, one of those senses is the hearing of faith, where you hear the voice of God speak to you, but it was not audible, but you picked it in the frequency of God. During a time of temptation, Satan is going to speak to you the same way. The same way God speaks to you. He will borrow your spirit, the faculty of your spiritual senses. Oh my God. <laughs> and, uh, he will begin to communicate. And the reason why you will, he, 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 he will come in, take the microphone inside, sit in the studio and begin to communicate the reason why he passed through all of the security systems in your inner man is because you were in possession of something called lust on the strength of that lust there is a form of compatibility that you have with satan and he takes advantage of that compatibility to come into your space and he begins to speak using the resources and the infrastructure that are built in you designed to enhance God's purposes. He, 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 he takes it over and he begins to use it, begins to communicate. It, it's, at some point it's as if there is a voice speaking. That is, and that voice can give you so much wisdom on how to accomplish the, the will of the temptation. <laughs> so much wisdom. You become exceptionally wise <laughs> in executing the object of the temptation. All of that was with the use of the infrastructure of your spiritual senses and architecture. All to draw you away. As long as truth is standing side by side you, there is a possibility for you to awake from your slumber. But he draws you away from where the voice of truth can speak to you. So that he isolates you on an island where he has ultimate ability to manipulate your fortunes. That's how terrible temptation is. Now, the question is this. Why did Jesus need to be tempted? Because if we check the book of Matthew chapter 1, Sorry, chapter 4, verse 1. 
you will realize that the need for temptation was occasioned after Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Stay with me. We are going far. We are going very far. We are starting like this, but we are going very far. I, I recently have decided to launch a study. A study into the scriptures. A study for depth. A study to uncover a guarantee that I will finish well. Yeah, I want to. Because I've read the Bible and I saw Saul. God put an anointing upon him. Made a... The day he failed, Samuel said, it was God's intention to establish the kingdom with his family forever. Huh? So God can have an intention that doesn't come to pass in the life of a man. So when I saw that scripture, I, uh, I, I took, I became conscious. I went back to study the Bible to find if there was a guarantee that I could stand upon that I will not I will not miss the mark it is those studies I did uh, meanwhile I have not finished the project I'm still on it it is those studies I did that generated what I want to teach now For 30 years, Satan was aware of the fact that Jesus was walking amongst men, but he could not identify him. Yes, John the Baptist did many good things, but the reason for which he was given the ordinance of baptism was specifically as a strategy to identifying who the Messiah was. So a lot of people came around John the Baptist's baptism and received blessings. Some confessed their sins. Some had encounters on the account of the fact that they confessed their sins to God. Many things happened and people had testimonies. But the reason why John was baptizing was not so that people could be blessed. The reason for his baptism was that it was a strategy given to him through which the Messiah will be identified. Are you still with me? Yes. I don't want to read too many scriptures so that we don't get lost in talking. There's an objective for my talking. I can take you to the book of 1 John chapter 5 and I'm going to show you from there that there were three means through which the real Jesus could be identify three means for the bible reveals that there were three that bore witness in the heavens and there were three that bore witness in the earth so when something comes from heaven and or something goes to heaven and heaven wants to test it there are three ways heaven can test that thing for authenticity when something comes from heaven into earth and earth wants to test it, there are three ways by which earth can test it for its authenticity. So if you go study your Bible, I don't want to get lost in talking. Three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. So if we want to find out the status of a thing, and that thing is domiciled in the realm of the Spirit, we will need to search out the position of the father about that matter the position of the word about that matter the position of the spirit about that matter when we teach on issues like discernment we will need to talk about the witness that comes from these three personalities that provide perspective about the true nature of things as it is constituted in the realm of the spirit but that's not where i'm going the bible also says that there are three that bear witness on earth it says what the spirit the water and what the blood so there were three ways to know that jesus was really the christ 
One of the ways was the reaction that took place when he shed his blood. It will interest you to know that Jesus was not the first person that was crucified. Even Spartacus was crucified. So, the Romans had strange ways of punishment. I believe Satan was responsible for inspiring them on very creative ways of punishing people. Because if we go into the biochemistry of crucifixion, you will know that it was inspired by, by Satan. Alright? At some point, there's going to be excessive test. And that's what happened to Jesus. And instead of them to give him water, <laughs> it was vinegar. Well, we will, we are not going there. So when Jesus was manifested, one of the ways we will know that he was the Christ was to test what happened with his blood. By the time Jesus got to Golgotha, he had, he had lost blood so many places. And heaven knew that he did not have the capacity to take the cross outside of the walls of Jerusalem. And Jesus was fulfilling the prototype of the scapegoat. And that prototype required that he takes the cross outside of the walls of Jerusalem and die outside of the walls of Jerusalem if salvation will be efficacious. Unfortunately for the Lord, he had lost too much blood and he could not make that trip of his own self own self and that's where Sim Simon the Cyrenian came to help when Jesus was hung on the cross nailed and the cross was erected according to prophecy because he was the one that said now is the judgment of this world now it, the prince of this world is cast out and if I be lifted up talking about crucifixion so the game began the moment he was nailed and the cross was standing erect now he lost blood in different places that was why he was weak that was why he needed help but now he was lifted up when his blood dripped and touched the ground after he was lifted up many omens took place one of the omens was that there was an earthquake another omen was that there was an eclipse the third omen was that the curtain of the temple that covered the Holy of Holies was rent. Are you with me? Yes, the centurion that was standing by the cross, he observed what happened when his blood touched the ground, the earthquake and the eclipse, the centurion, a non-believer. Are you there? Yes, the priest that labor in the temple, they saw the omen of the temple curtain getting torn from top to bottom, not from bottom to top. Curtains don't tear from top to bottom. Think about it. The one in your village, that one in your village that is so old, it, it, it begins to wear up, wear out from the bottom, not from the top. You are not following me. Are you there? If the curtain was torn from top to bottom it has an implication in Hebrew culture because when a man is grieving in Hebrew culture what he does is that he puts sackcloth upon his head and he rends his garment so every Hebrew knows that it was God whose dwelling was between the cherubims that was expressing his grief for the death of his son So the priest knew that Jesus was actually the Christ. Because there was an old man that appeared in their workshop. The Roman soldier who was an unbeliever that has crucified so many people on the cross before Jesus. When he saw that his blood generated earthquake and there was an omen of an eclipse. Ah! He said we are in trouble. Because crucifixion was meant for criminals. 
he said this one is a righteous man he began to seek help because he had been given an assignment to punish a man that was righteous it was an unbeliever that said that are you there all these things were revealed because of his blood and the scripture says one of the indicators through which we can identify who the real Jesus is, is by what? Blood. Did you get the bloody question now? And I don't, I don't have time to take you to Genesis to show you the first time human blood touched the ground, what it did. And when Jesus' blood touched the ground, what it did. Because the first human blood that touched the ground, he was innocent. But this blood that touched the ground, that blood earthquake, he was righteous. The blood of a righteous man. And an unbeliever identified him. <laughs> if you are a student of the law, you will know that righteousness was not capable under the structure of the law. I don't want to go into all of that doctrine. But Jesus, his identity was revealed when his blood hit the ground. Another way to identify who Jesus was was by water and that was where John the Baptist now comes in John the Baptist baptized so many people in the, in the rivers of Jordan before Jesus came oh are you there yes, alright so when Jesus came that was when John remembered his marching orders the one that gave him the ordinance of baptism and told him to go to Jordan to baptize said anyone that comes for your baptism that after baptizing you behold the holy spirit come from heaven and alight upon him and remain the same will be he that will baptize with the holy ghost john in the book of john chapter 1 i think verse 36 he he brought he bore record that this man is what so i'm concerned about that baptism because Jesus' baptism had a different implication from your own baptism. Have you thought about it? Okay, you have not thought about it, so let me not trouble you. The implication of Jesus' baptism and your own baptism as a Christian is different. Because John's baptism was not a Christian baptism. John's baptism was a strategy baptism to identify the baptizer. You will need the Baptist to identify the baptizer. Are you there? I don't want to go into all of that. It will take time. It's not as if it's, it's not sweet. It's very sweet. But it will compromise on our time. When Jesus came out of the, of the water, because he was baptized in water and in the Holy Ghost at the same time, came out of the water, all the signs that John spoke about, they manifested, they were manifested that day and heaven bore witness, the father bore witness and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hey! Now, there are many alphabets that are used in the educational system to rate academic performance. One of them is F. And I know you, you understand the implication of... <laughs> Then we have E. Sometimes in the university you pray for it. <laughs> so that you can graduate on time. Because E, can, you can, we can move with that. They brought a man to take a course. The course was purely theoretical. We had already, if you give, we are in the sciences. If you give us a theoretical course, it's an A. We'll just cram it. This man came and transform the theoretical cost to, a, to calculation. In fact, made it spiritual. <laughs> the prayer point was not A, was not B, was E. Let's just have E and continue this journey. If you see the way the father, the father's remarks about the son, you will find out, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That's an A. Normally when somebody scores an A, a, the university is likely to retain you, give you employment, make you an assistant lecturer, and your career in the ivory tower begins. 
Jesus scored an A in the school of the father. Are you there? And the next posting for Jesus, having scored an A, was a wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I'm just trying to draw your attention to the fact that was it really necessary for Jesus to be tempted? Why was he tempted? Um, it's obvious you are not with me. Can we go to Hebrews chapter 4? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. It will interest you to know, well, let's read the scripture first before I draw your attention to a few matters. He said, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Now, this scripture is saying loads. First thing we can deduce from this scripture was that, yes, Jesus was tempted. He was not tempted in all ways. He was tempted in all points. So I'm going to show you what, what the Bible means by the points of temptation. Because he, he was tempted in all points. So we need to understand what the points of temptation are. Is that clear? Number two. We saw that Jesus, no, no, leave it there, leave it there. We saw that Jesus was tempted in all points as like we are, but yet without what? Sin. Why? I want to test if you are following me. Why? He was tem tempted like you are tempted at all points, but Jesus was yet without sin. Why was that? You are following me. You see, <laughs> Jesus is a perfect example of who, of God's definition of a man. He had human desires, but his human desires never became lost. Never became lost. So even when Satan came and tempted him at all points, there was no connection. Oh, you are not following me. All right, okay, okay, okay. An LG remote control cannot manipulate a Samsung television. When you bring it and you press, you are on your own. Because they cannot communicate, they cannot interact. But the moment you bring a Samsung remote control, the first thing you will notice is compatibility. That means Satan was not able to find the needed compatibility to manipulate his life. When Satan discovers that his products that he brought to entice you is actually resonating with something you have inside of you, then he can change your channel. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I've been long enough in ministry to see ministers whose channels were changed. Oh. A preacher came to my city. Very bold. And he began to preach righteousness. And he was bold about it. Suddenly the city began to gather before him. As at the time I was talking, he had a congregation of 700. And uh, my city is a poor city. You must understand that. For you to raise a million in my city. Not a million Ghana cities. <laughs> it's difficult to raise a million Ghana cities. Very difficult. For you to raise a million of our money in my city you must be helped of God you must be helped I, I'm not a city preacher that's my difference between me and you 
we are in the countryside dealing with the demons. The, the demons don't dress up before they come to us. They are naked. <laughs> Who raise all kinds of money? <sighs> Unfortunately for him, there was a girl we knew on campus as fair as a nightingale. We knew the, the lady. She was the one that robbed young ministers of their future ministry. The giants, the giants, they lost their name in her corridor. So when we went there for a, a, a service, a church service, we now discovered that that girl was his secretary. <laughs> the lady I speak of is tremendously endowed. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> Not just endowment in the as you descend, <laughs> but also endowed with HIV. <laughs> there, there, there is an additional top up in the endowment <laughs> profile. <laughs> Satan changed the channel of this man of God. Because the remote control he bought. You see, all that Satan brings to the table in a situation of temptation is enticement. The, the reason why compatibility is achieved is because there is a personal matter that you have protected that finds compatibility with his remote control. You know, in my city, there's a big river. One of the rivers in Nigeria, River Niger River Benue. So we are the men of the Benue. So we have a river in our city. This man went there in the night, 12 midnight, and spoke to the river and said, I know you are there. Remain there. Me, I remain here. <laughs> then he poured his hand and anointed oil. You remain where you are. Me. Leave me alone. I mean, that thing he did, the river did not leave him. It was one of the tools from the river that was pushed and eventually became his secretary. This lady is endowed. You don't understand what I'm talking about. There's physical aspect of endowment. There's spiritual. Ah, I told you on campus, if a, I don't want to go into stories now. The reason why I'm here, preaching to you is because I survived that lady. Yes. I survived. I survived. <laughs> you know, some of you wear perfumes. Uh, what are the, the names of of the latest perfumes? You know, he's the one that knows the is the one that knows them. Is the one that arranges them. So I don't know their names. I can't even remember. Hey, help me. What are the names of the... So you know the perfumes you buy. This lady I'm talking about has a spiritual aroma that can draw you. It can draw you. It can draw you. There were like three of those ladies on that campus. Huh? That had that ranking so the one the one that was sent to me is not this exact lady that i'm talking about is another one of the same ranking that one pursued me for five years now you see it's something that happened for five years at least you can talk about it for five minutes i don't even want to start those <laughs> may the lord help us <laughs> five years that she failed she now preached to me and said since you have refused to leave your God don't leave him again that was the last thing 
I'm talking about there is a square in my city that can take 15,000 people. So when we have serious events, that's where we hold it. There were like 12,000 people in the square. I just got posted to my city after school. I went, got a job, trained us in Abuja, got posted to my city. We were on this crusade ground, 12,000 people. This lady just, it's not 12,000 people. She, if she wants to spot you, you can't hide, you, you, which she will find you. You don't need to give her your address, the, your house address. They will just come. They know you, they know you from the spirit. Hey, I'm talking about endowed people. And the pastor that was speaking everywhere, going to speak to the river, going to speak everywhere, could not see. And that lady changed his channel and blessed him with HIV. We saw him shrink until he died. Meanwhile, all of these things that happened did not touch the man's intelligence. He was still intelligent. He was still sharp. So a temptation knows how to bypass your security system. If you are still with me, say amen. <laughs> now, Jesus was tempted at all points as we are, but without sin, indicative of the fact that Jesus' desires never became a lost. That was why he was the idea of a perfect man. So if Jesus is a perfect man, why does Jesus need to be tempted? Because it was the Holy Spirit that drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. It was not Satan that came to look for Jesus. It was Jesus that went to look for Satan. Do you realize that Jesus arrived at the grounds of testing before Satan came? Yes, sir. It was him that went to look for Satan. Why was it important? Oh my God. Why was it important for Jesus to be tempted? I know we have scholars in the auditorium. Maybe we may extend the mic to a few scholars to give us their position on the matter. All right, let's, let's take one point. Let's take one point. Why was it necessary a man that was not capable of lust a man that was not capable of any such tendency amounting to lust why was it necessary for him to be tempted and you will know it was the spirit that led him into temptation I think you can now understand part of the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Should I tell you something? As your rank begins to increase in your territory the test that the last person they gave the man to wrote that he failed you will be led into the same temptation and the temptation will carry the same points see temptation is measured in points for the bible reveals that he was tempted at all points are you there? Now, so if I have the time, we will look at the points of temptation. Your temptation graph should give us an insight into how far you have traveled in the journeys of God. So if we check the points, those of you that did physics in secondary school, when you are plotting a graph, you put points. And then you can now connect the whole graph. It becomes a line. Your spiritual journey can be measured 
by your points of temptation. We can actually evaluate and find out where your journey ended at the point, last point of temptation. So the Bible reveals that he was tempted at all points. You get that? Okay. Why was he tempted? Before we look at points. Matthew chapter 12 verse 29. That's one of the reasons. Matthew chapter 12 verse 29. You see, um, Jesus' understanding of spiritual things was it's a bit different from our own understanding. The Bible says how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man? Then he will spoil his house. As far as Jesus was concerned, humankind was under the authority of Satan. What will eventually translate into his public ministry his ability to deliver people from Satan's stranglehold will be determined by a quiet encounter with Satan that is not displayed on Facebook. A, an encounter with Satan that is not posted on Instagram. From the perspective of the spirit realm before you start your ministry heaven already knows whether you have failed so when people come to Takra Day to set up a tower for God they get cameras and they broadcast on Facebook I am so, 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 and so, the senior prophet of. The man wants to broadcast to the entire land. Meanwhile, he has not met with the authority that governs the territory. The mileage that Jesus was going to cover in ministry was going to be occasioned by the outcome of his visit to the territorial landlord. Jesus said, how can a man enter into a strong man's house? And he was, this statement, he was speaking in parables, making reference to Satan. That he has an intention to spoil the goods of the strong man, namely men that are held in captivity. To the wilds of darkness. He said the first thing to do is not to go and start spoiling the things in the strong man's house. We set up our structures to broadcast so that the things in the, under the strong man's power we can release them. Jesus said there is something that comes before that. You will need to bind the strong man. I attended a faith Bible college, faith based, a faith colored Bible college. Everything was faith, where we believed that nothing was impossible, and that we believe we had.
Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.